In this video, we are going to examine how polarization happens in a traveling electromagnetic wave and how that is implemented in system view and what are the implications of not being able to achieve a specific polarization. Let's see the, in the wave in motion. So as the electromagnetic wave propagates, in the plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation, if we project the electric vector, it can vary only in certain patterns. In this case, it is varying horizontal. Now it is vertical and it can also vary in a circular fashion, either clockwise or counterclockwise. The vector can also subtend an ellipse if in that case we call it elliptic polarization. How this happens? If we take the electric vector and collect the envelope of the magnitudes, the x and y components, and ignore the time varying part of the electromagnetic wave that is responsible for the propagation, we are left with the envelope. In this envelope, if we, we have four quantities, magnitude of x, magnitude of y, phase of x, and phase of y components. If we appropriately set the conditions, choose these values, we can realize various types of patterns, linear, circular, elliptical. So how is this all realized in the case of system view? We opened a workspace called Explore Polarization from the example directory. And initially we set up all the simulation controllers of the uh, which are phased array analysis uh, controllers to be uh, not auto calculate. But we let us choose for the TX phased array analysis auto calculate mode and then display the, uh, the, the design, um, TX design schematic. And in this schematic, what we have uh, are four sliders. These four sliders are the four quantities we discussed earlier. And these four slider values are initiated in a script called constants. And then as you can see here, these four quantities are initiated as tunable quantities. And then we uh, set up, we computed the electric E theta and E phi vectors. After computing those vectors in the script, we attribute those values to the element pattern E theta E phi that will give the specific polarization to the pattern. Now the pattern itself can be isotropic or directional, or it can be an imported pattern file. Now let us look at some of the uh, graphs that um, we can simulate and then display. Initially, let us set up let us set up the sliders so that we get um, a linear polarization so in order to be able to do that we set up one of the e theta or e phi magnet um, quantities to be the magnitudes to be zero and the other one is one and then the phase both of them zeros and if we also choose to resolve the beam pattern into two components E phi and E theta, when it is vertical, we get the E phi component only. And then if we set up the other way, we get the horizontal polarization as shown here. Perfect horizontal polarization. And if the quantities are finite, but not equal, then we get other types of linear slant polarizations. When both of them are equal, need not be once, but when both of them are equal, then we get 45 degrees polarization. And if the phase difference at that point of time between them is 180 degrees, then we get this linear slant polarization rotated by 180 degrees. Now, you can also, you would have noticed that when it is a slant polarization, we were able to transmit both E phi and E theta uh, 
what happens is the power gets uh, divided into each one of these polarizations e theta and e phi this property is exploited in the receiving case as we we are going to see that the other type of uh, interesting polarization is a circular polarization when the phase difference between them is exactly 90 degrees we get circular polarization and when it is circular polarization we have to resolve them into the right circular and left circular polarization so that we know what type of polarization it is so in this case if we exactly set it up to 90 degrees we don't see any component of the right circular we see only the left circular or we can go the other way and set up minus 90 degrees phase difference so that they become right hand circular polarization any other combination in between is when the magnitudes are unequal we get the elliptic polarization so as, as the magnitudes are not equal the width of the ellipse varies and interesting thing is if the phases are not exactly 90 degrees then also we get a little bit distorted circle which is ellipse but you know the ellipse is actually the plane of the ellipse is rotating we get very interesting patterns from this so this is how we are going to be able to control the transmitted beam by setting up the antenna polarization of the transmitter let us next examine how this what happens in the case of a receiver so let us go and then close all the windows and make our tx polarization not auto calculated whereas the receive auto calculated so that when we use the sliders the receive polarization analysis only runs and if we open the rx design and the table the table represents the power received at the input of the rx port and let us also bring up our graph 2d graph that tells the type of polarization so here in this case what happens is what we are seeing here is we are seeing four additional sliders than the previous schematic these four additional sliders are ie phi and ie theta phase and magnitudes i represents incident so what we are saying is these additional four sliders are setting up the polarization of the incoming signal now the other four sliders at the top represent the antenna polarization unless the signal polarization matches with the antenna polarization we are not going to get exact uh, or we are not going to get the entire power received through the antenna um, without any loss if if the if they are exactly uh, matched as we can see here we are going to make it also 90 degrees this is 90 minus 90 minus 90 and um, magnitudes are equal and we get minus 48 dBm that is the exact amount of power expected uh, by uh, taking into account the electronic gain of the parts that are given here what happens if they don't match so if I let us say if I just slide this and then set it up exactly the other type of polarization my antenna my receiving antenna is a um, let's say the orthogonally different type of polarization than the incoming wave then we should not get any power that's what we are seeing here we don't get any power at the receive port so we cannot measure that signal we totally reject that signal is it desirable to reject that signal yes it is usually we have uh, in the case of aerospace defense let us say the radar has two antennas the uh, and it is transmitting one antenna is used to transmit let's say it is transmitting a horizontal polarization signal and when it receives it receives both horizontally polarized 
through the horizontally polarized antenna as well as through a vertically polarized antenna. If a jammer signal is coming to the to the receiver to the uh, radar antenna, then radar certainly receives its return through the horizontally uh, polarized antenna, and the jammer signal will also come through the horizontally polarized antenna. And jammer signal may also come through the receive uh, to, to through the vertically polarized antenna unless jammer signal is exactly matching with the horizontal polarization. When this happens, because we are not receiving anything through our vertical polarization, no return, no radar signal return comes through the vertical polarization, we get the jamming signal leaking into it and we would know that the radar is being jammed. So radar can take corrective action at the time and um, save itself or take a corrective action to uh, escape from being jammed. This also brings into, a, uh, into the uh, picture what happens if the antennas in the receiving uh, radar receiver are not perfect. Uh, so the receiving, let's say the receive uh, uh, antenna, vertical polarized antenna is not exactly vertical polarized but slightly distorted. What happens is it will receive the return signal as well as the jammer signal into that secondary antenna, second uh, the vertically polarized antenna. So it would not be able to tell um, because the re re received signal is a return, radar return, which may mask the jamming signal. So it may not positively be able to say anything about it. So it's very important to simulate the radar receiver, including the antenna, uh, with a very accurate simulator, like uh, the RF simulation, RF phase array analysis tool, like the one in system view. System view can take into account these components from their exact models from the measurements. We can bring in the phase shifter S parameter files with respect to all the states, and we can bring in a very accurate uh, amplifier models like X parameters or, or cis parameters. And we can also bring the exact uh, S parameter file for the uh, digital attenuator as well as the power splitter or power combiner. We can also model the antennas fairly exactly by bringing their patterns, their impedances, active impedances, etc., and their coupling matrices, etc. So we have a very powerful tool that will predict what exactly happens if there are impairments in the system, and then that will in, uh, give us an opportunity to correct them before we go and then deploy these systems. Thank you very much for watching this video.